What's up guys, I'm Zach and welcome back to Workshop Edits. Now today's project is gonna be a little bit different than what you're used to seeing on this channel. Instead of me building something in the shop, what I wanna do is take you through my journey, starting from just the genesis of the idea, researching all the way through 3D printing, the first project for my shop. Now, 3D printing has been something that's been on my list that I've wanted to get into for a really long time, but it's kind of intimidating. There's so many printers out there. You see makers using all different types. I truly still don't really understand a whole lot about them, but I did do enough research to figure out what I could afford, what I wanted to start out with in my shop, the types of projects that I wanted to do, whether it was you know modeling fun toys and experimenting with just 3D printers in general or building jigs for the shop and kind of hacking your way through figuring out what you could use in your shop that isn't really readily available for sale at stores or online or whatever. So this video again is gonna be a little bit different. So I just wanna take you through that journey and then show you the first project that I dove into, which I think is actually really cool. I've never seen something like it. Uh, it's gonna be a project that I will have available uh, in case you do wanna 3D print it yourself. And so yeah, without further ado, let's get started. All right, so this is my baby right here. This is the Flash Forge Adventure 3. This thing costs about $450. It is a great entry level printer, uh, having had this in the shop for about a week now. So just a couple of features about it. The printing platform is just under six inches by six inches by six inches, or I think it's 150 millimeters cubed. Uh, that's generally gonna be what I found uh, to be the beginner kind of smaller, I don't know, desktop size 3D printer, readily available for people who just wanna get into it. Anything beyond that, you're gonna really start to increase in your price, and I just wasn't really willing to spend kind of beyond $500 for getting into it. Big thing on my list for wanting to have one of these was to get something that was fully enclosed. This thing is in the shop. My shop is super dusty all the time, even with dust collection, even with a big air filter hanging and circulating the air. and. To me, I figured if it's gonna get dusty, it might as well be enclosed and protected because you know, if you go inside this thing after having had it in here for a week, it's really clean. Another big thing I found in my research was one, the ambient air around 3D printing or around the project that you're printing, if it can be maintained at a pretty steady equilibrium, it's gonna result in a better print. So having something that is enclosed is gonna help maintain the temperature inside that printer. Another thing is having a heated bed that's also auto leveling. So this thing will heat up to like 100 centigrade, I think, maybe a little less, I can't remember. It doesn't really matter, but what it does is just heat up to the right temperature. By having a heated bed, it, af it actually results in much better overall 3D prints. Another great thing about it is you can actually pull out the platform and it's flexible so that you can just pop your 3D prints right off it, it's super handy. You can just pop it right back in there, close it back up. So this thing was super simple to set up. I basically just popped it out of the box, plugged it in, flipped on the switch, which is just right here, and it just powers on. Like there's really not a whole lot else to it. You can load filament on the side here. One gripe I do have with this model in particular and some of the smaller enclosed beginner 3D printers is that they only can hold half kilogram spools. That is fine, but it's a little bit annoying because you can buy bigger spools, like one kilogram ones. So for example, these are half kilogram spools. This is a one kilogram one. Twice as much material, for some reason, costs $15 less than this one. Why? I don't know, a little bit annoying. But uh, you know, in my research, what I found was, since this piece can pop off, there are 3D models out there that exist where you can plug this into the side of your printer and actually expand the printing capacity. So it's actually not a huge deal. A little bit annoying that it doesn't just come with the capacity to do it, but the fact that you have a 3D printer that can print things to help expand the capacity and the capability of your printer is kind of an incredible thing that I didn't even think about until I started diving into it. So super cool, love that about it. This thing is also Wi-Fi capable. I haven't even set that up because I just like being around the printer and using a USB port, which is super plug and play. Literally just load a file from Flash Print, which is the native software for this thing. It will take the model that you have. It'll line it up with the platform size that comes standard with this printer, mount it to the platform itself in the software and create supports for it and then export the G code. That G code can be loaded on a thumb drive, plugged in very simply here. I hit build. I pull up my thumb drive and I just hit go on the project that I wanna do. So just to recap my experience in terms of researching and figuring out what I wanted out of a 3D printer. 
wanted something that was under 500 bucks, wanted something that was out of the box, super simple to just kind of plug and play, something that came with its own software for splicing, which is basically just taking the model that you are bringing into whatever 3D software you're using and being able to divide it into layers, plug it in, export the G code and hit print and this thing will do all the work for you. Wanted something that was enclosed, it helps with better prints, it helps prevent all of the mechanical aspects of this thing from getting dusty because this is in my workshop. And I wanted something that just fit on the workbench and actually just aesthetically looked really cool. I feel like this is a really cool thing in my shop and kind of just like looking over and seeing it. All right, so with that said, I wanna take you back to the table saw and walk you through the first project that I created on my own and 3D printed with this thing. Let's do that. So having had that thing in here for about a week, what I'm finding is just that not only is having a 3D printer super useful and being able to just print out pretty much whatever you want within a reasonable size, but it's sparking so many ideas for me on types of jigs that I want for the shop or you know, little knickknacks that you can't really buy and they'd be really difficult to build out of wood uh, because they need to be so detailed and accurate. So the first thing that came to mind, and I've never seen something like this, so if it's out there, I apologize, I swear I didn't steal this idea, is a little permanent fixture that can slide over the table saw fence and serve as a spacer block whenever you're doing miter cuts. So for anybody who's not aware, for doing safe miter cuts on the table saw, if you are using your miter gauge, which slides into the miter slots like this, let's get a piece of wood. You generally do not want to do really long skinny cuts on the table saw. What will happen is by doing that with the piece not staying directly 90 degrees, it could bind up between the fence and the blade and kick back. Your hand could roll over the blade. Even with a saw stop, that is incredibly dangerous and you should never do it. I have done it before and I've experienced minor forms of that. I don't do that anymore and I encourage you to not do that also. So what you usually do is take a scrap piece of wood. So this is three quarter inch wide. You could do it with a half inch block, whatever. And what you do is you take it and using a small clamp, you will clamp it onto your fence. Then you will, uh, whatever length of piece you're trying to cut, you will slide the fence over and add three quarters of an inch to it. That way, when you're doing these cuts, you will measure it here exactly where you want to cut it. Then as you move forward, you'll be making that exact same cut, but you'll have nothing riding along this fence. It's much safer. That's how you should do those cuts. That's fine, but I figured out that I could make something better. So instead of having to keep ugly scrap blocks around and a clamp on file, I 3D printed this. This is a block that slides very nicely over my specific table saw fence. This is the saw stop T-glide fence. And what it does is friction fits over it. You can see how nicely it fits. And it's got a half inch spacer on this side so that whenever I want to do miter cuts now, instead of having to get out the clamp and have a you know spacer block around, all I gotta do is take this thing and pop it back on. So I spent the last week learning Blender. Blender is a free 3D animation modeling software. It's mostly used for animation, but it's a great resource to be able to create STL files, which this thing accepts. I think it accepts a bunch of other ones, but for the sake of my own process and projects, I'm using STL files. So pretty simple. I took a couple of lessons online for Blender. I learned basic functions on how to model square straight objects using a couple of modifiers in the software. I then was able to export that file to flash print the software that goes with that line it up and create the G code and plug and play. And here it is came out perfect. That is going to wrap it up for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I look forward to using this thing a lot more in future projects. I don't really see me doing individual videos on me 3D printing things. That's not really an entertaining or educational thing I think I want to do on this channel. But the potential to integrate this into projects, to integrate it into you know, new things for the shop that are just going to make my life a little bit easier, I, I'm just super excited for that. So. Yeah, without further ado, uh, thanks for watching. I uh, look forward to seeing you next time on whatever it is I'm building. Bye. Alexa, turn on the vacuum.